What is up you guys, it's John John, and here it is. Finally, my video on how I use my compressor in GarageBand iOS. I have been getting so many requests for this video specifically, and I am so sorry I haven't gotten it out to you guys, but here it is. So this here is a song that I recently finished that is going to be on the upcoming album I recently announced on my Instagram and Facebook. And what we're gonna talk about specifically today is in terms of vocals, how my compressor helps me to achieve the sound that I look for in my music, how I utilize that compressor and manipulate it to get the sound I want, and what a compressor is just generally used for for people who aren't too familiar with the tool in the first place. So jumping right into it, here's the sound. Something doesn't feel right Like the best thing I can do is just stay alive Like the best thing for you is to leave me behind And it makes me wonder so there it is. Obviously, we got a lot of atmosphere there. It sounds very upfront, very present, very clear. And most of those descriptive words I just used entirely owe themselves to the compressor itself. So let's go ahead and open up. I use Channel Strip Compressor, which I've mentioned in previous videos I got off of the Apple iTunes store. For those of you guys who use FL Studio, I believe this app is available for FL as well. Most of the applications I use are usable for many things from GarageBand to Cubase to FL. They're pretty much universal. And Channel Strip is actually three different tools pulled into one. And so I'm actually gonna be talking about them each individually from left to right. First, the noise gate, then the equalizer, and then the compressor. So jumping right into the noise gate, if you don't know what a noise gate is, basically what it's going to do is it stops air from getting into your microphone a little bit. And I don't mean the air that gets into your microphone when you're singing into it, like the puffy air sounds that come with your P's and T's and things like that, but more just the ambient, fuzzy air sound that happens whenever there's no other sound in a room. The noise gate is how you get rid of that. And that's actually something also that I get asked a lot about on this channel is how do you stop air from getting in your microphone? This is how. This noise gate here on the left side of channel strip, it just consists of three tools. You have your threshold, your attack, and your release. So first let's talk about attack and release because those are two universal words that you're going to hear all over the place. You're going to hear those two terms anytime you try to use a compressor, anytime you try to use a noise gate, a reverb, anything like that. Attack and release are always two parameters of those types of tools. What an attack does is it determines how quickly the effect in question starts. So if this is a noise gate, we're talking about how quickly the noise gate begins to cut out sound from the audio file. And so in tandem, a release is going to determine how softly or sharply the noise gate lets go and stops cutting off the sound. So then the threshold is basically a volume level parameter that's going to determine how quiet your vocal can get before the noise gate starts to kick in. If you can look at this dotted bar and just imagine that everything above it is not going to get touched by the noise gate and everything below it is. And then that more solid blue bar at the bottom is just the bottom level of the sound spectrum in our noise gate. Essentially what I'm doing here is I'm determining that everything that gets louder than say right here, it says negative 37 decibels. So anything that gets louder than that is going to go through to my microphone and become audible in my recording. And everything that's quieter than that is not. So if I go ahead and just play my vocal without the compressor on it at all. Something doesn't feel right. Did you hear that noise that we had right there at the end of the vocal? Let's go ahead and play that again. That noise right there is what a noise gate deals with. So if we turn this back on, right. no noise at all. So when we pull this up and we actually look at where the noise gate is hitting, let's look at where that dotted blue bar is again and I'll play the vocal. Something doesn't feel right. So like I expressed before, when you saw the sound file kick in, everything that went above that dotted line was audible and everything that went below it was not. And all the attack and release we're doing there was basically judging how sudden and hard of a change there was between the noise gate cutting out sound and the noise gate not cutting out sound. So to demonstrate this, I'm actually going to move the noise gate threshold a little bit higher so that it's closer to where the vocal actually lives so you can hear what it sounds like when it's cutting out sound. So if we move this up a little bit. Something doesn't feel right. Let's put that right up there, right where the top of the vocal lives. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set the attack as quick as possible, and let's go ahead and play this. Something doesn't feel right. 
So you could hear when the attack was super hard like that, it got really choppy and it was just cutting out super sharp. If we were to slow this down all the way, it got a little bit quieter, but the more important part of what was happening there is that when the vocal cut out, you could actually, it was really quick, but you could hear it fading out rather than just stopping short. And that's what the attack does. It determines whether or not the vocal is going to fade out or whether it's just going to stop short. And what you want there kind of depends on a couple of different things that are completely preferential to you. One, your singing style. Two, the type of song you're playing, whether it's a, a song that, you know, sounds more electronic and maybe even robotic like Daft punk style of music or if you're going for something more rmb that has like a really soft flow to it you might want a slower attack so that you don't have those super jagged cuts in your vocal so if i go ahead and set that back to the preset it was originally at let's now turn the release to be as quick as possible something doesn't feel right not a whole lot of noticeable change there let's slow it down as much as we can something doesn't feel right and there is where our release kicked in. So you could hear a little bit of noise still kicked in there after the vocal was over and that's what the release is doing. It's deciding how long the sound file is allowed to live before it gets cut. So you pretty much just set these two exactly where you want them to be. For my purposes, I usually like to have my threshold at negative 44 decibels. My attack, I usually keep at around six milliseconds and my release at about 34 to 35 milliseconds. And that gets me pretty much everything I need to get this. Something doesn't feel right. Just a nice organic, sharp enough to be, you know, clean and have that sort of pop sound to it, but still come off organic sort of sound. That's usually what I like to go for. And these settings on my noise gate pretty much get me that every single time. So moving on to the equalizer, I pretty much just don't touch this. All an equalizer does is it's three bands. These are going to determine where your vocal file lives on the frequency spectrum. This actually has literally nothing to do with compression at all and while i think it's nice that they include this tool in channel strip to compensate for garage bands very limited number of plugins that you can have on a track i usually need something more complex with my eq something that looks a little bit like this and a lot of times it actually looks even more complicated than this and you just can't get that with such a cut and dry three band equalizer like this so i just don't touch that at all if you'd like to know more on how an equalizer works. I actually have a video on just generally mixing vocals in GarageBand that touches a lot on equalizing vocals that I will go ahead and link right now. But for the purposes of this video, we're gonna go ahead and move on to what everyone probably came here for, the compressor itself. So we see a couple of knobs on this tool that look similar. We have our attack and release and our threshold, just like before. And yes, they're all pretty much doing the exact same thing. The attack is still just determining how hard the compressor kicks in. The release is determining how sharp or how soft it lets go of the vocal. And the threshold is determining how loud the vocal is able to get before the compressor actually kicks in. Now, backing up, for those of you guys who don't know what a compressor does, what a compressor's job is, is literally to take the loudest parts of a sound file and the softest parts of a sound file and sort of equalize them so that there's not a lot of contrast and dissonance in those two different volume levels. The purpose of that is if you've ever listened to like a rock song or a metal song and you had parts in those songs or even pop music does this a lot and you had parts in those songs where the singer was singing really softly, especially if there's a really busy and atmospheric or anthemic instrumental going on in the background that should be drowning out the vocal but the vocal still sounds present that's why the compressor does what it does or if you have a song where there's really not a lot going on in the instrumental and the singer is singing very loudly but it's not overpowering everything the compressor is also why that is happening it's taking the loudest parts and the quietest parts and it's pushing them closer together so that all the volume levels stay in a comfortable range that is audible and clear, but not over or underbearing. And so the threshold, in the case of a compressor, is actually just determining how loud the sound file is able to get before sound starts getting cut off. So you can see if I reset the preset, I pretty much have mine living between negative 40 and negative 45 decibels at all times. And that brings us to our ratio, which is pretty much the only new knob we actually need to worry about. You'll see a knob like this on pretty much every compressor compressor ever, whereas the threshold is meant to determine how loud the vocal gets before it starts getting cut, the ratio determines how hard the cut is, how much volume gets removed 
from the sound that goes above the threshold. So if we look at this, I have this sitting at five to one. Literally what that means is for every five decibels of sound that go above the threshold, we will only actually hear one decibel of sound. It divides the amount of sound that you can hear and that's how it's able to so drastically take crazy contrasted volume levels and bring them so close together and make them sound similar in volume and presence. So if I were to just turn this off and we just listen to the vocal, still with the noise gate, but without the compressor. Something doesn't feel right. What you're going to hear is an extremely loud vocal. And the reason is because I have the volume turned up really, really high. The reason I do that is because the way a compressor works, like I said, anything that goes above that threshold gets cut. And so you're basically lowering the overall volume level of your sound file. You're making everything quieter and staying more at an even level. So once you have your threshold and your ratio and your attack and your release where you want them to be so that the loud parts aren't sounding super different from your quiet parts, that's where you can see this makeup knob right here comes into play. What that does is it's literally making up for the lost decibels in sound. It's taking your quiet parts and your loud parts and together moving them both up at the same rate to reach a higher volume level that sounds more present in your vocal. So if I were to turn the makeup all the way down and play this vocal, here's what we're gonna get. Something doesn't feel right. An extremely quiet vocal, but if I move this back to where I had it around 17 decibels, Something doesn't feel right. Now that's about the presence that I want in my vocal. Turning my volume up all the way up like this, by the way, is just a choice that I made because I had the room to do so and it's just what I decided to do. That's not something that you have to do to get your presence back. You can actually just keep turning this makeup knob as much as you want all the way to 30 decibels until you get there. That's just not what I decided to do. Basically because this knob is really small and the volume knob on the lead vocals is not. So it was just easier for my fingers to keep track of and for me to like really tell what I was doing. But that's not the way that you have to raise your volume levels if you don't want to do it that way. But going back to the compressor, that's pretty much it. Just to give a quick recap, threshold determines how loud the vocal can get before sound starts getting cut as it goes louder. Ratio determines how much sound gets cut after you hit the threshold. Attack determines how quickly the compressor activates and release determines how quickly the compressor lets go and makeup just allows you to bring your volume levels back up to where you want after you've gotten your compressor where you want it to be. So I hope this helped out you guys. I know compression can be like a really intimidating field because it comes with a lot of terminology like threshold and attack that prior to trying to mix music, a lot of people have probably never heard before used in these ways. And so I hope this added some clarity to how you can use these kinds of tools. And by the way, for the record, whenever you see these kinds of words in music mixing, like attack and release, those are words you're going to hear very commonly across different tools, compression, EQ, reverb even, all of these different types of tools are going to have attacks and release on them and they do the same thing every single time. So if you learn how to get comfortable using them on one tool, you'll know what they do anytime you come across them in any other tool that you use. Threshold is usually the same way. Ratio is honestly a term that I don't see used a lot outside of compression. That's really just a compressor term in my experience. But by and large, these are all words that you'll be able to see across different things that you're doing and mixing and be able to do the same things with them. So that's it for this video, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you did or you learned something useful, I would love it if you guys subscribed. Like I said, I do have an album coming out later this year and I would love to get you guys thoughts on it and have you guys around to hear it. And I'd also love to hear your thoughts on this video. If you have any thoughts on my process or anything that you think is even maybe a better idea, maybe a compressor that you like more than channel strip that you think would be good for people to know about or a way that you use your compressor that you think would help a lot of people to know, I really want this channel to be more like a community where people can come here and have content to watch that will give them good and reliable information. And so I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts and see you guys around for future videos. For now, everybody stay safe, stay healthy, and peace out, you guys.